Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm gonna show you an honest installation and review of Modern Driveline's hydraulic master and slave cylinder conversion for your old muscle car. Now this is gonna be for a T5 transmission, um, but I'm sure it's applicable to other transmissions as well. Um, we are gonna dive into step-by-step -step every single part of the process to convert this thing over. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a review so you can decide for yourself whether or not this is worth spending the money on. Let me just preface by saying, if you haven't seen the videos leading up to this point, um, hit stop, go back and watch them. And you can see how you basically can remove your automatic transmission and convert your old car to a manual step-by-step. -step. Um, so hit stop, go back and watch those videos. And once you're done, come back right here. And then you can watch this video on the last portion of the install where we do the hydraulic master and slave cylinder. Let's dive into the content. Now is the master cylinder. And my car is an automatic, so um, this means that I have to install a clutch pedal and it's a you know you're starting from scratch now i will say it's tight in there especially with these old comets and this might be the same um, for you mustang guys but those braces that go from like the shock towers over to the back of the firewall really get in your way so we just got started and i'll kind of run you through the first couple steps so they want you to cut away there's a gasket um there's a little gasket they want you to, and mine was falling apart, but this sits in here kind of like this. This is on top of your steering column. And you basically use the edge with a razor blade and cut around it. Mine was already ripped. Uh, then they want you to measure down about two and a half inches. Mine wound up being probably more than two and a half inches just because of, well, no, actually it's pretty darn close. Um, that was just kind of by eye. Anyways, they want you to cut this away. And then from inside the car, up under the dash, they want you to remove this piece, this piece, which is the um, steering column block off plate. So you've got these, I think these are 5 16 and then you've got your brake line on the inside that is like a 3 8 or something a little bit bigger. Um, and you remove that and then you can peel it off and then you'll be able to see through. Um, I'll show you on the inside so it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, you gotta remove any kind of jute padding or anything. So there's a block off plate that goes around the steering column. And as you can see, the gasket's still there. They want that gasket to remain there, um, but I removed everything else. At some point I'll have to go and cut this off, but I haven't done that yet. So I had to read these instructions quite a few times to really understand what they want you to do. Okay, let me try and explain as best I can. Initially, I thought I was gonna take a hole saw and using you know this drill through the firewall, but that's not the case. What's gonna wind up happening is, this is the hole you're gonna drill right here. So inside the car, the bottom of the pedal assembly, you're gonna slide this up until it hits the top. Then what they want you to do is sliding this left and right, what you cut out initially, this is like a circle. I'm gonna have to go in there and make a better cut so it looks more like a semicircle. But effectively, you're lining it up so this hole is straight through because the gasket's no longer there. I won't be able to hold the camera, so I'm gonna try and mark this, drill the hole, and then come back. But first things first, I'm gonna try and cut a better thing with the razor blade, with a sharper razor blade, to make it more semicircular so I can easily line this up because that needs to be lined up so you can slide your new master cylinder through. Okay, here's a little idea I came up with. This is just a top to a butane refill, and it seems to fit through this hole perfectly and the reason i'm doing this is they want this to butt up against the top of the pedal assembly if you let this hang down it's going to hit the steering column so you kind of have to lift it up but then you're trying to get this inside edge this this angle right here this radius to mesh with the cutout that you made when you removed the gasket so that's kind of all by eye so i'm thinking if i tape this in place this will kind of simulate the master cylinder and I can shove it up in there, make sure it fits and then mark everything. And that way I know it's gonna work. Okay, for my next trick, I employed a laser level to try and get, they want the bottom to be horizontal. I found it easier to get the side vertical with a laser. I threw the, the nuts on hand tight. The reason is now you've got to find the Sharpie that you just lost. You got to go back over inside and you're gonna have to cut on your firewall. Just trust me on this one, you may not be able to see it, but basically there's a lip that's got a cut so that'll sit flat. So they want you to trace, so you can get in there with something super, super, super small 
to cut the firewall. Okay, so if you focus in, you can see where I traced it. And the instructions make sense now where they say, don't accidentally cut the hole you just, because look, it's so close to the edge of that hole, you gotta trim that lip. There's gotta be a better way when they designed this. I don't know why they couldn't have cut a recess or something in, in that piece so that it just fits better, I don't know. So I gotta figure out what I can get in there with to, uh, to trim that. That's gonna be interesting for sure. Okay, what I'm about to tell you is in no way condoned by OSHA <laughs> or Milwaukee. I would highly recommend wearing a face shield, safety glasses, gloves, you know, whatever you have on hand extra. Get yourself one of these little guys, okay? They will run off an M12. They're a tiny little disc, and basically you gotta snake your hand in there and cut some slots in that part, and then kind of slowly, slowly drag this over. We need a helper for this next part. So you're gonna have your helper hold this, and then you're gonna go inside the vehicle, and basically you're gonna install the plate. Now, with the plate installed, you can come back and see where you gotta drill your holes in. Let me tell you, it's tight in here, but uh, hopefully you'll have enough space to do everything that you need to. So you'll drill your holes and read the instructions. I won't tell you which holes which because it depends on your, your make and model, but you'll drill two quarter inch holes, not five sixteenths, just quarter inch. I've been snowed on, I'm back in the garage, it's another day. Um, I wanna focus on a couple things I don't like about this kit. Um, one is, so when you, when you have an automatic car and you have to swap over to a manual, you have to buy a clutch. In the instructions, one of the first thing it says, it talks about grinding out this little um, stud, drilling the hole out, blah, blah, blah. I just assumed when you buy a clutch to do an automatic to manual conversion, they're gonna give you the clutch that already has that done. No, no, they sell you a nice new painted clutch that you have to take a grinder to and grind off this part and drill it. Like, why do that? If I'm spending $160 on a clutch pedal, which is a lot of money for a clutch pedal, why is that not already done? So that's one of the things I don't like. The other thing I don't like is there's no instructions that I can find on how to change the clutch pedal. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. Um, you can't just knock the old pin out and slide the new one in. On my car, at least, I've got windshield wipers. Mine's a two-speed wiper. I don't know if, or mine's a single-speed wiper. I don't know if the two-speed is different, but you have to undo the three bolts that hold, there's like a little cover for the wiper motor. You have to undo those, drop those down, and that's how you get the bolt in. And then there's bushings, the bushings wanna fall out. They, they should show you a diagram one of where all the bushings go, so you know where to put them back in. They should show you how to remove it, right? It just, there's just some little things like that. Like all in all, I think the kit is pretty good, but the instructions could be improved upon for sure. And come on, if we're buying the clutch, just sell us one that's already modern. Here's what I'm talking about. Nice brand new pedal, all nice and painted, even says modern driveline on it. This piece, you gotta grind this and drive this out right off the bat. How silly is that? So now that you've grinded it off and made a little nick there, which I'm kind of frustrated about. Um, anyways, you can take a punch or an air chisel, just knock that out. We'll go ahead and do that right now. And that's what it looks like when it's done. And just to check, go ahead and take one of your little clevises here and just make sure that that slides through. It does. So we're all good. So once that's all touched up, <clears throat> what I did is I went and took off the cover on the clutch pedal so I can measure because I'm gonna cut the brake pedal to the same dimension. So if I look here, it's three inches. So I will trim down my brake pedal to three inches. Once you cut your brake pedal down, um, I'm not gonna put any glue or anything on it yet, but then you'll just take your old pedal or your old pedal cover, which might require two hands, and it should just slide right back up in there, just like so. There you go. I mean, it's not perfect, but from a glance, from a glance, it looks totally fine, right? You can't even tell. Change of plan, screw that. Ditch this thing. It's not gonna fit right anyway. You're not gonna have enough holes. Go ahead, make yourself up a cardboard template. I may or may not do it as part of this video. Probably not. Just make yourself a nice block off plate out of cardboard, then trace that over to aluminum or something, some stamp steel, and just throw that in there because that's gonna look like garbage. Again, another thing I wish, they should really give you the option, and maybe they do, but 
I don't know, they should, you're buying this whole kit, sell you the darn rubber gasket, you know, or at least a stencil or something to cut out one for, because you're, if, <laughs> Your car is a 60 something, that gas gets shot by now, you know? So just another thought. So we're gonna jump ahead and we're gonna install the clutch pedal. Okay, we're gonna skip some steps because I have been underneath that dash, messing around with those linkages and getting that clutch pedal in there. And it's the least fun part of this entire swap, doing a manual transmission swap. If you have a car that already has a clutch pedal, <laughs> a lot easier. Um, anyways, we are going to jump up. We are going to basically do some things I should have done before. Well, not really. Um, we're going to go back. We're going to adjust the slave cylinder to get that correct. We're going to install our reservoir. We're going to route our lines. We're going to do all that stuff. Um, because basically what I read is if I were to connect the linkage and everything, when it's time to go bleed the system, I actually have to go back and disconnect it all anyway. So I might as well just hook everything up, put fluid in it, all that stuff to start. And then later on, I can come back and adjust all the linkages and make everything work like it needs to. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this next part uh, takes some takes some time to get right. Okay, so let me talk you through it. It's going to be hard to see, but if you if you try to focus inside there, you've got the throwout bearing. Now they want the throwout bearing to be riding. Well, the clutch fingers are actually going to pressure plate fingers are going to look like this. They want the throwout bearing to be riding up against those. So what they instruct you to do is there's a GM nut right here and an adjuster nut. You loosen this up so you can turn this. You take this and you shove it all the way back as far as it'll go. And then you adjust to the point where you have zero lash. And let me tell you, uh, my tip is to go a little bit beyond zero lash because every time I'd go to zero and I'd tighten it back up, it would seem like it moved a little bit. So they want this thing, basically, they want the, the throwout bearing to be riding on the pressure plate fingers at all times. Okay, let me zoom out. So if you're bleeding process, you've obviously got your bleed screw. Step one, you wanna tighten this up, fill the whole system up. I'm gonna go to the hardware store, grab some extra parts, and you come back. When I do, I'm gonna open this up until I see a stream of fluid coming out. Then I know it's gravity blood. Then you go ahead and tighten this back up. You follow the instructions with the syringe. Now the big thing here is I've got a loop in this line to put a high point above um, where the bleed screw is. That's to allow you to push fluid through with the syringe, but trap, you know, make make like a little trap so that you can't suck air back in. It'll make more sense later on, but this is the kind of setup that you want to start. Okay, my next step here, I got my bleeder shut. And uh, look, you don't need to use dot four, you can use dot three. It doesn't need to be synthetic, but this is what I have. Um, you go ahead and fill this and you'll watch it. It's draining down as I fill it because uh, it's gravity bleeding even though it's shut right now. Okay, here are the steps. I've got the bladder installed per the picture into the master cylinder reservoir. I've drawn fluid up into here. The bleed screw is closed. I'm gonna go make sure I don't have any air trapped at the end of this. So I'm gonna squeeze it out a little bit like a syringe and then I'm gonna put this up in there, go under the car, open the bleed screw, Press this down in three seconds. They want three seconds, so not too long. One, two, three, you should have pressed it all the way down. Then go underneath the car, close the, close the bleed screw, and uh, hopefully at that point, it should be bled. I know we glossed over this a bit uh, earlier, but there are some steps inside the car, and the instructions actually do a pretty good job of showing you where uh, the linkage pieces need to go and how to install those. The big thing that I wanna point out for this step right here is you wanna make sure two things. One, that when you press the clutch pedal in at the piston going into the master cylinder, you have between 1.35 and 1.4 inches of travel in and out. So get yourself a caliper, a ruler, or something like that and measure going in and out to make sure you have full travel. The second thing is you do wanna make sure that you have a way to stop this clutch pedal. You do not want the master cylinder um, to be bottoming out in its bore because that could damage the cylinder. So this is little button right there on the firewall. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see it. That is installed as, basically that comes with the car. So that was with the car when I bought it, but if not, you would wanna go ahead and install something like that. So you can limit how far this clutch pedal travels so you don't damage the master cylinder. For those part of the instructions, I would say look at Modern Driveline's pictures. They do a pretty good job of explaining everything. Once you get everything bled, come inside, make sure you get a nice firm pedal. 
it's firm to the touch. You want it super firm. If, if this thing moves, you've got air still in your system. So you do want to make sure you get all the air out. The pedal should be firm from top to bottom. Okay, we'll jump back down on the ground. I'll give you a kind of a final review and what I think on this system now that I have it fully installed. So I've got the system fully installed at this point. Um, a couple things I'll say right before the end. Make sure you follow the end of the instructions. I'll post up a quick little video here you can see. You do want to make sure your system is fully bled. Um, they recommend putting it up on jack stands, putting it in gear, making sure you can get the car in every gear. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. You'll see the wheels turn there in the beginning. That's because I didn't have complete disengage, disengagement of the clutch. I went back in and re-bled everything again and did this test a second time and then I was good. So um, you'll see what I mean here in the, in the little video that I post, but just take your time um, and make sure everything's good before you take this thing out on the road. The last thing you wanna do is spend all that time and then get stuck somewhere and have to have a tow truck come pick you up because you can't get the car in and out of gear or something like that. Um, okay, let's dive into the review. So a couple different points. Um, number one, price. I, I don't think it's very expensive for what you're paying to get this. I think um, a couple little odds and ends, like I mentioned earlier, with a clutch pedal could be less expensive or could come um, with some parts already modified. But overall, the master and slave cylinder portions, not that expensive for what you get. So that's a plus. Um, as far as the instructions go, that's kind of my biggest letdown with this whole thing and a good portion of why I made the video is because the instructions could be better. I mean, they, they, they spend a lot of time on certain parts, they make it really clear, and they just gloss over other parts altogether. So uh, Modern Driveline, if you're watching this, um, I think you could make your instructions better. Hit me up and I would be happy to take some pictures and mark some things up to show you what I think you could improve on. Otherwise, just watch the video and you get the whole idea. Um, as far as how it drives, this thing drives really, really good. It kind of takes a while, like I said, to get set up. I didn't have the bleeding process, didn't go as smoothly the first time. Um, the big tip there would be, they say to open the bleed screw a half a turn. Trust me, you're gonna wanna open it more than that so you can get all the fluid out of the system. Um, but once you do all that and you go and drive it, this thing will drive honestly like a brand new car. You could you could have somebody hop in it who's never driven stick before and they could learn on this car with this hydraulic master and slave cylinder. So if you're used to a cable clutch like in a late model Mustang, this is gonna be a huge improvement. Um, if you already have a Z-Bar set up and it doesn't interfere with your exhaust and you've got it fully adjusted correctly, I've had that on a T5 before and I think it's really good. Um, so my, basically this is what I'll leave you with. If you've got a Z bar already set up the linkage, it doesn't hit anything. And maybe you just like refurbish some things, get it all adjusted per the manufacturer's spec. You're probably good. Save the money. If you have a cable clutch or you want extra space or a really soft pedal, then this is definitely the way to go. So hope you guys like this video. Hope you found it interesting. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos on the comment, comment, go back and watch them because I've got tons more comment content. That's a tongue twister. All right, guys, hope you liked it. See you next time on Truck and Roll.